I want to talk with you about being a witness. Everyone is called to be a witness of Christ. You may not be one of the two witnesses of the end times, but you are called to be a witness of Christ. And the only way that you can witness is if he's actually ministering to you, because being a witness means that you're sharing your testimony. In God's law, two or more witnesses are required in order to establish a matter. So God is going to use this sort of, maybe it seems like, peculiar language to you that he says, you are my witnesses. What does that mean? I'm going to share with you my favorite chapter of Isaiah. It's Isaiah 43. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I've summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. By the way, this is what Jesus said to the apostles before he went to the Father. Don't be afraid. God is going to take care of you. I'm with you. I'm with you always. I've given you the counselor, the comforter. This is what God says to his people. Do not be afraid, for I'm with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Lead out those who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Which of their gods foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things? Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right so that others may hear and say, it's true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. I and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Okay, so if he's, if you're his witness then I'm going to assume that he has revealed to you. I'm going to assume that he has revealed to you according to his pattern. And his pattern is to clean you up, to reveal to you that you have not been living in the way that he requires, and now he's going to move you to follow his laws and keep his decrees, just like he said in Ezekiel 11 and 36, when he takes out your heart of stone and he places in you a heart of flesh, and then he places his spirit in you, and this is the new covenant. He sprinkles water on you. And then he moves you to follow his laws and keep his decrees. I'm going to assume that if you're calling yourself a Christian and that if you really belong to him and you are his witnesses and he's going to be with you and you don't have eyes but are blind and ears but are deaf, I'm going to assume that you have something to share with us. So where are you guys? Why aren't you sharing it? Do you not realize that it's been given to you in order for him to use you in his kingdom, in his name, in what he's doing. That is not for you. That is not for you to covet or share only with select people for your glory. It's for his glory. Did you hear what he said? I formed you for my glory. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I'm God. How can you bear witness? How can you be a witness, one who shares testimony, if you just keep that for yourself? It's impossible for him to be in you if he's not moving you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days, I'm he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters. Hey, guys, remember Egypt? Remember? 
when he did this? Do you believe that he did it or is it just a, a story that you tell? He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. If there were not witnesses to share that story with you, you wouldn't even know it. You would have no encouragement, no understanding of where to go, how to move forward. Do you think that you're not responsible for that? Do you think everything's just been done for you? Then where are you guys? Why don't you assemble with the body to share what God is doing in you, if indeed he's in you? If indeed you're receiving from him. No one has asked anything of you. I guarantee that the majority of you on this channel, if not all of you, have gone to counterfeit churches and given money and done all of this. No one asks any, anything of you here except to do what God has said to do and be a witness of what he's teaching you, of what he's done in your life, of how he's moving you. It's your covenant. Do you not realize that it is your covenant that Paul said, assemble all the more as the day approaches. Do not forsake the gathering of the saints. And yet the majority of you have given so much more according to the world. And, and in fact, it's easier for you to drop some money in a basket than it is for you to be used in this way because it requires vulnerability, doesn't it? But you guys sit on this channel and you listen to my testimony and you listen to me tell you my home is in foreclosure. I have $1,000 in my bank account. I'm getting letters every single day, people knocking on my home. You know how intrusive that is? On the door of my home. I share the fiery trial that I'm going through with you, but you don't feel the need to share that with me, with anybody else. You can't be his if you think that that's okay. You can't be. You just cannot be his if that's where you're at, if you don't feel any obligation to the body of Christ. How can you be in the body of Christ? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, that I, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Do you understand what that means? The people I formed for myself so that they may proclaim my praise so that they will be witnesses, so that they will share their testimony with others. They will encourage others. They will be used in order to glorify God. And yet so many of you think that going to a church is for you, you, you. And those are counterfeit. Oh, I'm going there to find a husband. <laughs> going there to find a hot wife, right? Because that's like what those pastors say. That's their big goal. Become a pastor and find a hot wife. Guys, we're supposed to be used. We've been formed for a purpose in Christ. If you're not living your purpose, you're not his. That's the bottom line. Yet you have not called on me, Jacob. You have not wearied yourself for me, Israel. You have not brought me sheep for burnt offerings, nor honored me with your sacrifices. Hey, guess what? You know what your sacrifice is now? It's not a, a lamb or a goat or a pigeon. It's you. You're the sacrifice. Are you bringing him sacrifices? Are you honoring him with your life? Or do you again just think he's chasing you around all day? I have not burdened you with grain offerings nor wearied you with demands for incense. You've not bought any fragrant calamus for me or lavished on me the fat of your sacrifices. You have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your offenses. I, even I am he, who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. Review the past for me. Let us argue the matter together. State the case for your innocence. Your first father sinned. Those I sent to teach you rebelled against me, so I disgraced the dignitaries of your temple. I consigned Jacob to destruction and Israel to scorn. I don't know if you guys are taking seriously what I'm saying, but next year the Antichrist is going to rise and you're going to be brought to a place of actually wanting to serve him. If you're actually his, he is going to bring you low because as far as I can see it, no one can be bothered to actually live 
in the purpose for which he set them apart. No one can be bothered to be a living sacrifice to him. Anyone else reading the Bible? Do you see that that's what it says you're supposed to be? That you're going to die for Christ and that you are a living sacrifice? Your life is a living sacrifice to him? If that's not how you're living, how can you say you're his? Now look. There is a body that you guys can meet with if you have discerned that what I say is true and that who I am is true. If you've gone back and discerned that with God, which you should or you shouldn't be listening to me, there is a body that you can meet with. But we require that you return to God first. Everyone is required to do a fast. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we have experienced so much grief with people coming in and trying to use the body for themselves. God's house is a place for him to be worshipped, for him to be glorified, for him to be praised. Where people who are actually in him come in, having returned to God, having the spirit of God in them and are used as a sacrifice. And we will teach you how to do that. But you have to at least take the step of fasting to return to him. And if you're unwilling to do that, then you're not in him. It's impossible for someone to be in him who has not returned to him. You see what I'm saying? People act like this is like such a big deal. I even got accused of being a cult one time because that's what I told someone is this is what we've decided. We're not going to put the body through grief because we're allowing anybody to come in. That's not what Jesus has said. That's not the precedent in the Bible. The Bible says to cast certain people out of the camp. That you must purge the evil from Israel. So why would we willy-nilly just allow everybody to come in? No, we're not going to do that. This should make sense to you if God is in you. He should testify to it. That you don't get to be in his body if you have not returned to him. It shouldn't be a burden to you. John clearly said that. God's commands to return to him, and that is a command, should not be a burden to you. We're not adding to the Bible. We're not adding to the scroll or placing extra burdens on people. This is what God has said in his word. Now, you might be saying, well, I don't know how to be a witness. I don't even really know what a testimony is or how to share my testimony. Do I go knocking on doors? What do I do? We will teach you guys and we will teach you through our testimony. That's how it works. We will share with you how we have healed in Christ We will share with you how he has brought us in and what he requires. How are you ever going to learn this? If you're trying to go it alone, you need to be able to discern who are, who belong to God and connect with the body of Christ in order to be in the body of Christ. But you got to do that first with God. You have to discern with him, whether we're from him or not. Do I speak the truth? Am I from him? And if so, then am I able to shepherd you? Am I able to share a worthy testimony with you? I'm not asking you to take anything I say at face value. I always ask you to discern what I've said with God. What God has taught me regarding testimony, because I am one of the two witnesses, one of the 144,000. The only reason they're called two witnesses is because God is referencing his law. And God taught me this early on before I even knew what my role was, before I even knew what a testimony was. He would build something in me as I would sit with him each morning, each day. He would build understanding in me, teach me, convict me, crush me. And then he would show me where that was in the Bible. And then he would tell me, now go write. And that's how I wrote those books. Every page of those books are my lived testimony. Every single page represents something that God was doing in me that day. And he will either testify to it or he won't. If you ask him, he will either tell you this is from me or he will tell you it is not. If he doesn't tell you anything, it's because you're not hearing for God, from God. He will either tell you that it's true or he will tell you that it's false. This is how you share your testimony. If you're still reciting some story from 20 years ago, it's because you haven't done anything in between. If that's all you have to give, you have not been doing anything. And a lot of times, people who are reciting a story from 20 years ago, what they're reciting is what God did for them. 
during a wooing process in which he was giving them an opportunity to return to him. So they might talk about miracles and things like that that God has done. That's not an indication that they responded. It's not an indication that they received what God was doing. It's an indication that God was doing something to call them in and they haven't done anything in between. God should be doing something in you every single day. Every day I have something to share with you. There are days when I don't because I'm out there doing something else, whether it's in an assembly or a Bible study or working with others who need help. But every single day, we're supposed to go to God and receive our daily bread. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus, I am the bread of life. You remember that? That's your daily bread. When you pray that, it's not like you're praying, like, make sure that we eat, Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Jesus isn't telling you to pray for these superficial things. He's telling you to seek first the kingdom of God. Seek your daily bread, your spiritual sustenance on a daily basis. And don't just pray for it, but you need to sit down and listen to it. Receive that teaching, that building from God, and then go share it, guys. Go share it with someone. Don't forsake the gathering of the saints. Assemble all the more as the day approaches. Bring your testimony and be used as a witness to God or you're not in him. That is my message to you. If you can't do what God has commanded, the word says you can't be in him. That makes you a liar. 1 John 2, 3. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. If we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Well, how did Jesus live, guys? He lived in the role for which the father had set him apart. And the same needs to be true for you. You cannot claim that you are going to be priests of God and serve in his kingdom for a thousand years if you haven't been serving here. How are you going to be given a trust that you re rejected and refused to walk in when you were living here? You're not even willing to do your part within a body, however small that is. You're not even willing to do your part within a body to share your testimony, to encourage God's people as we're all going through these sufferings. How can I beg you even more to just live in your covenant? There's not anything in this for me. In fact, the more people who come in, the more I'm shepherding. So it's more work for me, but it's not burdensome. This is what God set me apart to be doing right now. How can I beg you any more than I have already done on this channel to pick up your own cross and live in the covenant that God has extended to you so that you can be saved? If you don't care about your life, why would anybody else care about your life more than you? Please consider the things that I've said and discern them with God.